Why are you scared? Watched too many Terminator films. <laughs> I started on a 3018, so we had neither speed or precision, so <laughs> I wish that we could just do away with Imperial system and everybody just be a tent. The system of tens. The part that scares me in AI is video. Yes. Because yes. once you make me do something I didn't do, I'm screwed completely. This room is filled with a group of people that are highly motivated, curious individuals. So with that, I think that there's an aspect of, let me see how they did it so that I can understand how I'm going to do it. Are the only one? <laughs> yep. You're the real machinist. Yeah. yeah. Right. Hello there, Precision. <laughs> Hello, I'm Leighton from Carveco, and today we're joined by a group of CNC experts who are going to talk about some of the hotly debated topics within the CNC community. So we have... James Dean Designs. Ben from Myers Woodshop. Metz, Metz is Woodworking. Hamilton Dilbeck. Brian, Barry Squirrel Art. Morgan, 130. Stel from 150. Cody Elkins from Cadence Manufacturing. Rob Neiman from Tarka. The guys are going to start off in the middle. We're going to ask a series of questions and they go to either side depending on what the question is. And if you're unsure, then stay in the middle. So do you prefer to make or buy your designs? So make or buy your designs. So honestly, as somebody who makes designs every single week and puts them out, I when I want to build something and I know that somebody else has built it and it's probably better than mine, I'm going to buy it. How, how much time do you spend searching to buy your design? If I very quickly can search it and it pops up and I'm like, ooh, that's good, I'll buy it. Because I'd rather not just be like, that's a great design and then do that same design myself. Yeah. I'd rather just support the person who did the design. I find so, it takes me a while to actually find a design to buy. So I just I just do the design myself. So something that I'm curious about, are you guys looking down on us? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> because, you know, you're putting more effort into something and making it like unique rather than us. We're yeah. just buying something. And it totally depends on what you're doing. Yeah. Dargan's making one infinity video, so he has to come up with something unique. Yeah. I want to make something unique so I can sell it yeah. online. And if I'm doing it for home and I just need the thing, like let's say it's a, uh, a dust collection adapter. I want to design that. I can, yeah. I can buy that for $5, print it out. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to buy it 100% of the time because I'm not going to resell that. So it depends on what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so do you favor speed or precision? So we've got speed, precision. <laughs> wow. We don't care about quality. No. <laughs> as quick as possible. All that I'm saying is <laughs> we like the quality, but All at the end stuff. of the day, speed is such an important thing. When you're manufacturing things and, and bulking out like a hundred of something, I'm just trying to like bump up the speed because like, you know, it's a curve. And at the end of the day, at some point, like I could spend all the time in the world to create the most quality thing, but how much better is it versus the time spent? I started on a 3018, so we had neither speed or precision, so. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it all depends on what you do. So like you're batching out a bunch of stuff to throw up on Etsy. Um, whereas like me, what I do, I, I make one thing for a video. So I don't need to make a whole bunch of them and do it super fast. I'm right. making one or two of them. So I'd rather it be yeah. precision than anything. Yeah. Yeah. You can know, tool grinder. Everything's got to be precise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you got to do it in, in speed so you can make money. Oh, man. Okay. I'm grinding at like three inches a minute. So, <laughs> yeah. Everything's slow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. When working, do you listen to music or not? So, listen to music or not? You know, you can move sides, James. No, I'm, I'm sort of like, yeah, he's closer to the side. It depends what I'm doing because if it's something just running in the background that I know is going to be safe, I'll listen to music. But if I'm testing feeds and speeds, then yeah, I kind of want to listen to it at the same time. Right. So I'm very split. When I come in here and I'm just like creating like a project all day, every day, but when I'm working and making videos, no, I can't. I'm always listening to music, especially in the workshop. It, it could be anything from like death metal to house music. It could be anything. 
Okay, so we've got a nice entry here. So we have Kyle from Learner CNC. So the next question is Instagram or YouTube? So Instagram, YouTube. Ooh. That's Instagram, that's YouTube over here. Oh. Why are you in the middle? Well, I use both of them a lot. And I feel like Instagram is more like, it's a closer knit kind of community, but YouTube, there's a lot more info out there on like actually doing stuff. Instagram is way easier to make content for, but you don't make any money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, but just hoping, I'm just hoping this changes the algorithm about what I do. So uh, <laughs> I'm using Instagram for that. <laughs> if uh, if you, you know, you're you trying to make a living with your content, yeah, YouTube is the way to go. But um, I don't know, a, a lot of the relationships that I have now and have formed over the last couple of years um, I, are from Instagram. People I've met on, I don't think I've ever met anybody on YouTube, so. It's the only one I've ever met from YouTube. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I would just say YouTube because it's librarable, searchable. If you're making content, you put it on YouTube, it's there forever. If you Google something, it's going to pull up a YouTube result before an Instagram or a TikTok version. Uh, so like if you're making content, like you said, to, to be searchable or relatable or you know teaching somebody, YouTube. But you watch a whole lot more YouTube too. I watch a I watch YouTube as if it's TV. Yeah, mm -hmm. actually, no, I, I'll, yeah. I watch a lot. So my car's broken. I'll watch it. That's about as much as I watch. Mm -hmm. I watch like shows on YouTube all the time. Instagram deletes my original fans, so that's all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next question: inches or millimeters? So we got inches, millimeters. Oh, this is this is millimeters over here. The English guys are standing in the middle though, right? It is kind of drunk. Yeah. Do you know why? I was raised in both, so if I've got a tape measurement, it's got both measurements, so I'd go to the nearest one. Funny story, I was uh, training uh, a guy from America. I was saying, yeah, we'll do this like say a quarter of an inch or whatever, and he was like, this is crazy, how do you know how to use inches? I was like, we created it. <laughs> <laughs> and I get a lot of abuse if I just do videos in millimeters from American yeah. people, so. <laughs> I do all my tutorials pretty much in inches, hmm. mainly for the American market. I will say like, I do everything on the CNC in inches, but then when it comes to stuff like 3D printing, where you're working on a lot smaller scale, that's, true. that's where I'd work in millimeters. If I'm doing stuff for myself, then I would use metric. Why do you guys use millimeters? Calipers. Right. That makes a big difference. 3D printing and laser cutting. Yeah. It's just, that's where those things live. I, on the CNC, I primarily work in inches, but i um, standing over here because I wish that we could just do away with the imperial system and everybody just be a tens. The system of tens makes so much more sense. Yeah. <laughs> right, so do you make a detailed plan or do you wing it? So detail plan, wing it. <laughs> wow. I can go this way. <laughs> this was detail, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'd, we'd, ex we'd expect you to be over there, to be honest. If you weren't over there, we'd be concerned, right? Yes. Yeah. I think I am for a detail plan, but most of it's winged along the way, so. I don't trust myself well enough to wing it. I, I have to have it detailed and um, I have to model something and make sure that everything's going to fit right and work right before I'll try to do it on a machine. Yeah, but it looks like you wing it. 100%. Right. Yeah, it looks like, like I'm wing it. Winging it. 100%. Wing it. 100%. No, I, I spent a lot of time playing. <laughs> you were like, you people. <laughs> You're eating food in the shower. Do you plan that? <laughs> yeah, I've got a whole schedule. <laughs> CNC experts. <laughs> do you prefer to work by yourself? or collaborate. So work by yourself, collaborate. What's up guys? <laughs> we can all just turn this all right. way. Yeah. <laughs> Working with people over here. I get way more done when somebody else is in the shop. Way more. Oh, goodness, yes. Because you give them direction or? No, I just, I like, it's because I don't plan and I wing, and when we talk it out, it seems to go faster. Oh, that makes sense. I think compared to most of you, I'm still new to this industry, so collaborating, I learn more from the other person than trying to be it myself, so. It's a bandwidth thing for me. I get so busy, like, it's really nice being able to reach out to some of you guys and come up with a plan and then execute the plan by collaboration. Yeah, working with Hamilton or whatever for years over there.
Yeah, it's it's <laughs> the wing it uh, planning type of thing, um, collaborating, but then working on my own. Well, you know, for the things that he's wanting. That's why I'm right here. Yeah, it's it's interesting because I feel like sometimes like I'm driven by creativity, and it's very difficult to give somebody else that same creativity when it lives in your mind. Yeah. So if you're able to do it by yourself and be like, this is a finished thing that I've done, it's great, but it also like you lose a whole lot of the connected you know, community feeling of it. Mm -hmm. So even with that, you saying that it's been so nice working with you because you do things in a completely different way than I would. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, that's way better, you know? <laughs> so, you know, I guess it depends on what you're trying to produce. So how do you seek help? Community forums? or tutorial videos. So community forums, tutorial videos. Whoa. Oh man, well, I can't read. <laughs> I need moving pictures. <laughs> why, why are you in the middle though, James, out of interest? Because community forums are great. You can get fast answers, but the problem is there is a lot of people commenting. So you've got to sift through, you know, some of the answers to try and find what is the right answer. <laughs> I think they're both useful tools, just for different scenarios. How many people watch the whole video? I, one thing I love about YouTube is that it breaks it up into chapters. So like if there's a specific thing that I need to know, you can just see right there on the timeline, like boom, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the extent of my reading, right there, just seeing what's on the timeline. The other thing is you can uh, listen and watch faster than you can read most of the time. Yeah. I put my videos on two times speed, and it's, yeah. it's a bright to them. That's what I was going to say. Some of the videos, I don't even listen to anybody talking. It's just, what do I need to see there yeah, right. yeah. and skip to that? I will say that this room is filled with a group of people that are highly motivated, curious individuals who love building and figuring things out. So with that, I think that there's an aspect of, let me see how they did it so that I can understand how I'm going to do it, rather than being what's the exact answer that I need to replicate. So that's, that's kind of what you say, that is why I stood here. Because I like to try and work it out myself rather than watching a video or something else. I like to tinker until I can do it. And then there wasn't an option to go through your network of friends or the people that you know. Yep. And for me, that's the strongest thing I have is my network of, of friends that I know. Mm -hmm. I agree. And sometimes as well, things can be so specific that a video is not going to answer mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, and you need to put all of that detail into the question that you're asking to get the right answer. How often do you lube your ball screw? Very often, never. Very often, never. Is this on? This is the office. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> he knows what's going on. <laughs> what's lube? <laughs> no, I actually, I actually do take the time to, to put it into the into the well here so that I don't have to do it manually. There's not a well in there, Morgan. I'm so glad you're over here now. <laughs> I just see that machine over there. <laughs> the first time that I cleaned the ball screw was about seven months after I got the machine without cleaning it but carving every single day. And the wad that came out of yeah. pack sawdust and oil Mm -hmm. I, I realized right then and there, every three months, I'm going to check it. I may not need it, but you know, yeah. I, I know it's clean and it's going to last me at least another three months. When securing your material, do you prefer type or clamps? So type, clamps. Am I the only one? Yep. You're the real machinist. Yeah. yeah right. Hello there, Precision. <laughs> I make fixtures for everything, and then my fixtures have clamps built into them, so it's like... Mm -hmm. Well, that goes back to you're making products that you're making for production. It's not yeah, like one-off things. You have time to make a template for it that will fit into your clamps because you're reusing that. And that makes sense. Yeah. It depends on what I'm doing. If I'm, if I'm making through cuts, I'm going all the way through material, tape, all day. Um, but if I'm just go I'm not going all the way through something, clamps around the edge, I'm good. Yeah. Depends on the cost of the material as well. Like if I can afford for it to, yeah, to be moves. messed up or right. I need that thing solid because it's an expensive bit of material. I've machined yeah. like a two inch cube of aluminium and there's no way tape would have held that in position. So I'm just the Isa. <laughs> I love how you say aluminium. <laughs> <laughs> aluminium. You still can't say how we say it. <laughs> 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 Just take the eye out of the. 
do you think AI is scary or exciting? So AI is scary, exciting. Why are you scared? I've watched too many Terminator films. <laughs> <laughs> I've used it to make my life easier to save, save me time, which ultimately is, you know, that's all around, so, yeah. You get scarily exciting. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a good good phrase for it. It's scarily exciting as a thing. We don't know its potential yet. It's got a lot of potential. But at some point it will be used in a negative way. It already has been. Yeah. But there's there it's that's a complex issue because like um a lot of people will create AI art and uh some people say, Well that's not your art at all. That's just a computer did it. It's like, no, no, I gave it the prompts. So it's like if we have AI start, like you just put a, uh, an SVG into a AI and you say, hey, toolpath this. Did you really do anything? Like you took the steps to get the AI to do it. Mm -hmm. So like then it becomes like, how much involvement do we really have? Yeah, and you know, the lumberjack all of a sudden a chainsaw showed up and they thought, well, you're not cutting that tree down. Exactly. Part that scares me with AI is video. Yes. Because yes. once you make me do something I didn't do, I'm screwed completely. Right. Everything else I'm on board with, but the video terrifies me. Yeah, yeah, that's the whole thing because, you know, people that create content, your face is everywhere. So yeah. you can, your voice and everything can be recreated. Yeah. And that's your main asset, you mm -hmm. know, like this guy. It, it, it's the, yeah, like the money maker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A few months back, you did something where you took chat GPT and you had it write some G code and like it almost works but at the same time if you don't know enough about it you don't know what is right or wrong could make your machine self-destruct yeah, yeah, yeah. okay so is CNC real woodworking yes no yes no wow <laughs> you in or on the line I'm on the line. I'm disappointed. Okay. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? That's actually a good answer. To the room. Yeah. Why? I think it's just another tool in the shop. Yep. It it is. Right. Yep. Well, the thing is, like, even if you don't consider what you're doing programming the CNC, the things you have to do to get your board or your material ready for the CNC, you are doing real work, woodworking stuff. You and gotta, the things that you need to understand to be able to get the machine to work properly, like, you know, your grain direction and the yeah. direction that you're cutting, is like, is this going to tear it out or is it like, there's a lot that you need to know about the, the, the physics and the, the properties of wood to be able to be successful with a CNC. I'm actually going to step out because I don't actually consider myself a woodworker. Yeah. <laughs> but you guys are good at doing that. I'm not, I'm not a woodworker. Also, most tools in the shop you can learn in like a day. A CNC in particular, like at least a month to learn how to yeah. use yeah, all the way through. If your end goal is good tutorials. Exactly. <laughs> if your end goal is to make money, what do I care if I worked hard physically or let a machine do it. Yeah, so I'm, I don't know. Yep. If you don't own a CNC machine, you think it's easy. If you own a CNC machine, you know it's hard. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so there we have it. Everyone has their own opinions. So let us know your opinions then in the comments. And remember to follow all these guys, all the links are below.